the, the very first time that I came across the project, um, reading the script, it certainly was a very interesting uh, story and unusual in the sense that the uh, love and so on was a very gradual experience for the characters. And the character arc certainly um, intrigued me in the sense that the, um, it starts off in one way as a proving of himself and then approving of himself as, I guess, a, a genuine lover, I guess, a person who needs to, to prove himself. And uh, the cross-cultural elements were probably the most challenging in that sense because they were coming from different perspectives, uh, the two characters, and that made it a very interesting story. Uh, I was very interested to see how that would uh, evolve, certainly from the actor's perspective, and certainly the uh, story, how it would show in the locations and how they would unfold. We were very lucky that uh, many of the locations that we had were unusual. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't seen some of the, um, what you would say, uh, what would seem normal and simple were transformed by these characters and how they uh, explored uh, their relationship in these locations. Um, one of the things I really enjoy about having a small crew is that you're able to move very, very quickly. Uh, one of the problems that we have with a very large crew, it's often a change or something like that will take a long time for that to occur. Sometimes I've had to break off part of the crew in order to uh, achieve a shot simply because the crew took will, will take far too much time to actually make that move. Um, in this case we had a very small crew and this allowed us to be very flexible and very quick. Um, some of the locations that I really enjoyed were for example um, in the middle of Parramatta. All the people that you see in the background are uh, are non-extras, they are just real people going about their business <laughs> and it's a little challenging sometimes to just wait for the, um, the usual hi mum and a few characters that wander past but generally speaking we uh, basically we get uh, extras at no extra charge and uh, they um, generally go about their business which was quite, um, uh, was quite a lot of fun particularly in the airport. In the airport scenes uh, all the people that you see there are, are non-extras. Uh, they just simply are people going about their business in the background. So it's a little documentary in a sense uh, with dram dram dramatised pieces in the foreground. <laughs> Using non-cinema lights um, is a bit of a challenge for myself. I, I have a tendency to use them uh, partly because they're a little bit more efficient um, and also non, um, they don't draw attention to themselves. I suppose that's one of the unique things by having um, metal halide lamps that I was able to use that look like more industrial fix fixtures rather than um, uh, cinema lights. Uh, tends, people don't tend to uh, get drawn to them like a moth to a flame. Um, <clears throat> one of the problems that we, we generally have in shooting in locations, particularly like for example, in the um, spice um, uh, spice shop, the spice shop had uh, people that you see in the background, shoppers, just general shoppers, and generally speaking, they would wander past and not have noticed that there was a film crew in one of the aisles. Um, they will notice there'd be lights, uh, and the lights, of course, uh, we have to put lights up somewhere. And by making them look fairly industrial, they don't seem to draw attention to themselves. It doesn't smack film crew over here come gawk. Uh, so, so we tend to, um, uh, they tend to be a little more um, subtle. But when they, the only thing that really gives it away is where the pool of light falls is obviously a crew uh, working there and, and cast, of course. Um, so it doesn't completely make them visible. It just may, means that from a distance they are less likely to be seen. The other thing, of course, is that uh, by using the metal halides I was able to reduce the amount of heat uh, in particular because we were sometimes filming in locations that could be very hot, uh, particularly during summer of um, 2013 we had uh, quite a warm summer and uh, the studio, well rather the locations could be pretty warm and makeup could just simply be running off the actors' uh, faces while they're um, standing waiting for a take. 
uh, what I did like very much was that the sharpness of the um, shadow that was created by the lamp. Um, these um, these lamps are open faced and they have basically a, a straightforward lamp in the middle uh, that sends a really sharp, crisp uh, light. And I like that because um, both of the, our main cast had quite a really nice skin and it was ideal for me to highlight um, that really crisp line. And I think um, it really worked well for this style of program. I didn't want to just soft light it and make it um, too... Um, uh, was it, uh, it lacked any guts or anything, but this had a bit of uh, sharpness to the edge and I liked that because it cuts the image uh, into the picture much more um, dramatically than you would get if it were just a big soft light. So um, in a way these lights um, I don't know, gave me a little bit of an edge, uh, a sharpness to the characters that they weren't um, they weren't just soft lit, you know, Doris Day gauzes all round, they were more uh, real uh, and more um, more striking and more more real more visceral I guess on the screen and that's what I wanted that nice sharp crisp light um, not always used for romantic dramas but I think this one it, it kind of because of the locales and because of the um, the reality that it finds itself in I think it suited that particular feel and the look of the characters To uh, really appreciate the um, uh, composition by Leo Raja and the beautiful um, connection to the characters and their themes, it really, I suppose, in a way, it kind of really cemented that relationship. Uh, throughout the film, all of the music, although <clears throat> people say, said to me, well, you know, it's, it's an Indian uh, type of music or something like that, and I said, well, actually, no, it's really probably more cinema. It's an international language of cinema and it's there, the, the idea of following character, building the, the layers that build to build a character and how they interact with each other. I think that's probably the most exciting things is listening to Leo Raj's music is being able to hear how he's managed to connect these characters visually, you know, with the sound and picture uh, of them speaking and, and them uh, interacting with each other he's managed to bring them closer together. What was missing uh, was made whole, basically. <laughs> and when you look at the piece, you realise that, um, you know, how much the performers can do on, on set and what local and location. And uh, once you hear the music, you just go, oh, of course, <laughs> that's what it needs. <laughs> that's who they are. And uh, the music really does really portray um, the depth of their relationship and it gives a, a greater depth to what would seemingly very mundane locale and feelings of, you know, just real spaces in a sense. He manages to make them very special and I think that's probably part of what uh, the relationship between them should be. It's about the idea of being special. It's not about the locale, it's about them and their relationship. And I think that was very important to hear how the music well, added to that and actually cemented it in a way. The reason why I think people really need to see this film is that they, in this package of cross-cultural uh, love story, that they can really get a sense of what are the little things that we take for granted in our relationships. And this particular film, I guess, highlights them more than any.